Hello, good morning everybody. We'll let some people join us. Okay. Morning. Good morning. I'm just getting ready for our session today. We're going to be making a forged wire pendant, but I've got a, the samples in of a pair of earrings, but that's fine. Okay, I'll just let a few more people join us. And we've got lots to cover this morning. Good morning, everybody. Little bit later today for us. Morning. Yeah, there's a few things that I want to do on a Thursday, actually, like in the morning, there's uh, something that Independent Oxford do, so that's why I'm doing it a little bit later, so I hope you don't mind. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at forged wire, how to make a forged wire pendant. Um, so there's loads that I want to show you, and it's absolutely endless what you can create with this technique. These are a pair of earrings that I've made. Ooh moving around a bit there we go okay so what we're going to be looking at today is using heavier weights of wires and um, shaping them how to shape them and the tools that you need to do that also how you can change the cross section as well which is quite nice to do so rather than working with a round wire then starting to flatten it so 11 a.m is better for you Kathy good um, so flattening the wire a bit so you end up with kind of flatter sections and not so flat sections so it so they look different thicknesses things like that and then adding beads so working with a couple of different weights of um, wires to do that okay so what we're going to start by doing is working with some 1.5 or 1.2 mil wire you want something that's a little bit heavier to do this and i've started to make a little sample of another pendant so i'm going to show you how to make something like that okay it's not finished but i'm going to show you how to make something this sort of shape with this nice um curve at the bottom a teardrop shape so 1.5 mil wire like i say you could use 1.5 you could use 1.2 I sell both in the shop and I've got it in um, silver plated or I've got it in gold plated and it's £2.10 for a pack and that gives you like a metre, 1.75 metres, so plenty for what you'd need for this. What we're going to use to cut this is our pair of side cutters. Remember these? We've used these before. Now, side cutters, you'll notice they've got one flat side and one little indented side. What you want to do is cut with the flat side against the side that you're keeping. So if I measure that again, 120 mil or 12 centimeters I'm cutting. Okay, so the flat side against there, and I snip. Because what you'll get, I don't know whether you can see it particularly well on there. This end is much flatter than this end. This end has got a point because that's the end that was in here, okay? So we've got the nice flat ends there. What you could do if you needed to, if you felt you needed to, would be to file down the ends a little bit. Just, to, I'm just looking around for a file. I haven't got one on the table, but you could, if you wanted to, file down the ends a little bit there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna use a former to form this around. Again, we, we've got all these in the shop, a whole series of different dowels. So they're all in a nice little pack. So if it's something you were doing a lot, it might be worth getting something like that. I think it's under £10 for the pack. Um, but you could just use a broom handle or um, a marker pen or anything. Anything that would give you the right shape and size that you want. So then what I'm going to do with this length of wire... I'm going to hold it into position in the middle, see that? And I'm holding it with my thumb, okay? So I hold it with my thumb there, and then I can pull both ends around like so. Like, and there's that lovely shape. I'm gonna cross them over a bit as well. Like so. Look at that, perfect shape. 
okay so that's just starting in the middle pulling one end round and then the other end round okay then what we need so we don't need that anymore then what we need is we need a pair of round nose pliers so with the round nose pliers what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this end i'm going to pinch right at the top there you see see i'm holding it right at the top bit further into my round nose pliers so round nose pliers are completely round and they taper down to a point so depending where you hold your piece on the plier will depend on how big the loop is going to be so i'm going to hold that about there all right and then i'm going to pull, push that down see my fingers here to stop it from misshaping i'm going to hold it there and i'm going to pull that round leaving a little gap for the minute see that okay so i'm going to do the same this side notice how i'm supporting the wire if i were to hold it here and start pulling that round it's going to misshape all up here so i'm going to hold it here and then i'm going to pull that round like so i find myself gritting my teeth as i work with this because it's quite hard wire okay there we go look and then we're going to pull that together. I've left a little opening there at the minute and you'll see why in a sec. All right. Now, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to secure the top. So you see how I've secured the top there with a little bound section of wire. I'm going to post pictures of this up again. But you can see you've got the little bound sections on here as well. Right. This one's actually using two separate pieces of, of wire and joining it together. So like I said, once you've learned how to do this, all the designs are endless. There's loads of great stuff on Pinterest to inspire you. I've actually got a wire work board on Pinterest that you could maybe look at, give you some nice ideas. This wire is 0.4 mil wire, so it's nice and light. Any beads that you decide to use will fit on it. So I'm just going to cut myself a little section. I don't need much because all I'm using it for is to bind the top for this bit. So I'm going to cut about five centimetres. Now, this is the important bit when you're working with wires and you're binding them. Let's get that out of the way. I've got so much out on the desk today. When you're binding wires, what you need to do is you need to hold it into position. I'm going to do it this way. Hold it into position with a length over. So you never start binding it in at the bot at the end because otherwise it's just going to keep turning. Okay, so I hold it there like that. I don't know how much my fingers are going to get in the way. Then the reason I've left those little gaps yet between I haven't closed up those loops is so I can fit my wire in there. Then I can pull it nice and tight. Let's just get that one back in there. I can pull it nice and tight. See that? And I can bind it around again, put it in there, bind it around, put it in there, through there. So I'm binding into that section. You see, look, that's all I need. Can you see the, I should have used a different colour wire, shouldn't I? There we go. Oh, let's just move that around. Okay. Now, if you have a little look there, what we've got is now we've got these two ends sticking out. So we'll just cut those off. Much, much easier than starting at the end of the wire. So I'm going to snip that end off and snip that end off. And then using my chain nose pliers, I can tuck the ends in. So I'm just going to use that side and I'm going to use that side. Now, notice I'm going to show you this later because it'll be easier to show you when we're working, putting the, the other the beads on really but you're tucking in with the chain nose pliers which are like the round nose but they're flat can you see how they're flat there and what we're doing is we're squeezing the wire around this wire the bit the heavier one so kind of our framework so there's our shape okay now what we're going to do next is we're going to flatten it i'm going to flatten it a bit and this is always it's going to be a bit noisy but this is good fun. So I'm going to use a steel plate. So I've got these little steel plates. I actually generally use a square steel plate, which is perfectly kind of smooth and stuff. These ones are what I've got for the um, the copper bunting necklace kit, uh, which I'm going to show you later on in the week, actually. Um, so these we, we can, you can buy again from me at the shop or you might have something that's a nice steel surface that you can use anyway. And then I've got my little hammer. 
and with the hammer here it's got a nice flat end on one side and it's got a rounded end on the on the other i'm going to use the flat side this is called a ball pane hammer because of the board end there so hopefully you can see what i'm doing down here and then I'm just going to hammer it. I'm going to hammer all the way around this bottom edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the cross section. So look at that now and you can see that it's a completely even thickness all the way around. OK, now if I start to hammer, it, it's going to get a bit noisy. You may even fall over. Hopefully not. I don't know whether the, uh, the phone's going to tip over. Let's see. OK, when you're hammering, make sure that you're holding your hammer at the end. So the hammer does the work. If you're like this, hammering it like this, all of that's coming from your wrist. You don't want that. You want to hammer it from the, um, hold it at the end. Good noise, isn't it? It's hurting, it's hurting my ears, actually. Just doing one side. Now this, oh, it's making my ears ring. <laughs> this, yeah, it's a very different noise to what I get in my workshop at my studio in Cowley. Look at the difference. Can you see that? Can you see that there's a difference there? So you see it's round cross section here and then it's all flattened down here. OK, and it's just made it a little bit thicker there. It really does make a difference. It just adds another kind of dimension to it, I think. I'm just going to do a little bit more. There we go. Look at that. There we go. I'm just going to give it a little rub over to just tidy it up because the uh, there's a surface on there like a a little sort of greasy surface I suppose that stops them from rusting look at that so look you can really see the difference can't you hopefully you can through the uh, video all right so now we're ready to start decorating it what we're going to use again for decorating I'm just going to give it a little squeeze there so what might happen is when you're hammering it might loosen off your bound section there so what you want to do if it does is just give it a little bit more of a squeeze with your chain nose pliers okay so just squeeze it back together with your chain nose and you remember I left that open so I could bind it there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close that up use your chain nose pliers see how I'm gripping it on each side Whoop, excuse me I'm gripping it on each side like that and then I squeeze it okay so I'm like this and then I squeeze and then I'm on that side and I squeeze and you see how that's really closed up now okay 0.4 mil wire again I could use a colored wire for this actually which might be quite fun to do let's do that because then you'll probably see it a bit more as well. So this wire we used when we were wiring up our decorations for the uh, window as well. I'm going to take about a metre. I'm going to use this lovely turquoisey, greeny, bluey colour. So about a metre-ish, about that. Cut it with our side cutters. All right. Now I've got all sorts of different beads to use for this and you can use all different sizes, depends on what you're making as to how big you might want it to be, but you can really use all sorts of different sizes. Now what I've got here is I've got a selection of crystals and pearls and I've got some fire polished beads and I've got all sorts of things here that I'm going to show you with. So this is what we're working on now, is binding it around the, um, the frame to add all this lovely detail and you can see you can see I've got different sizes there now this one I've done so the beads sit on the inside but this one I've done so the beads sit on the outside so you could do either of those okay all right so what we're going to do I'm going to take my 
metre because I want to add quite a bit to this I really want to build it up so I've taken a metre so I don't run out if you do run out then you can just finish off and start like I'm going to show you now anyway okay so to start with again what we're going to do is we're going to hold oh, can you see okay you're going to hold that wire over the edge so I've got a length coming up above there a length that's about the thickness of my thumb again if you have something that's too small this wire is really bendy and it's quite forgiving but if you've got a heavier wire and you did it so it's halfway in your thumb and you start trying to twist it will dig into your thumb and it'll hurt okay so I'm going to hold it about like that and I'm pinching it onto the frame and then I pull my wire through very important to do that because if you try and thread it through you'll end up with kinks in your wire so I'm going to wrap that around the wire I'm then going to wrap it through I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to do that one more time see how I'm pulling it through like that look and I've got a tiny little okay a tiny little wrap there and I'm going to put my first bead on so what should we put on first let's put on one of these lovely little bicones so this is a little Shrovsky bicone so just drop the pendant down and then what I'm going to do to make sure it's sitting where I want it to is I'm going you're not going to see it for a minute because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it between my finger and thumb so see it's it's on my thumb there I'm going to put my finger on the other side pinch it against the wire frame and then it will make it sit in the middle if you don't do that then it could end up sitting off at a funny angle. So I'm just going to do that and I'm going to come around the frame. OK, so my beads in between my finger and thumb. I'm going to pull that around the frame nice and tight. Pull it back to there and look, there's my bead. And I'm going to put another one on. So I think I'm going to go all greenies here. I've got loads of greens, one of my favourite colours. Or greens and blues. So we could go a slightly bigger one let's put a couple more of these on first just do one of these nice little crystals here and then I'm going to do the same again so I'm going to so I do I, I call that a in between oh I lost you for a minute then so I do a stitch in between the two the bead before I put the next bead on. So I kind of attach it to the framework before I do the next one. So they're gonna pinch it. Can you see I'm pinching it there? There's the bead, look, and I'm pinching it onto the frame. And then I pull my wire through, pull that around. I'm really pushing that wire up there with this finger, making sure that it's staying nice and close to the frame. And then I pull around and there's bead number two. Okay, now let's add something a bit bigger why not let's go something a bit bigger on there and start to build up ones that are a little bit bigger as we're coming around so again I've got my bead on I'm going to pinch between my finger and thumb and then I'm going to pull that round so let me know if you've got any questions, anybody, or if there's anything that you want me to show you a little bit more close up. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And you can start to kind of, if you're not happy about where that is, you could pull it around a little bit. I might just pull it down and just do this kind of bottom section there. Look at that. All right. So let's get some, let's work, really work at getting some beads on now. So you can see I've got nice and neat. Hopefully you can see... I know the quality is not great on this, actually, but you can see that I've got these little double kind of twists in between each of the beads there. OK. OK, let's uh, put on, let's go with another one of those greens now. It's really nice working with wire, actually, because you can really kind of position it wherever you want it to go. And then push the, hold it onto the frame bend that around, pull that through, come back around and we're ready for another bead to go on. Okay, what else have we got? I've got lots of nice, oh, I might put a little pearl on, might be quite nice in there. Let's go with a little pearl, maybe something a little bit bigger. Let's go with something that sort of size. 
Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, let's go with one of those to begin with. Okay, so again, I'm going to pop that on. And I'm going to wrap it around. Hold it into position. Pull through. Wrap. Pull through. I'm ready to position my next one on. Isn't that starting to look nice? Look. So you can imagine, you could really build that all up. I want to pull that down a little bit, actually. Let's get that down there a little bit. There we go. And then we can pull that round into position there. There we go. Look. All right. So I'm going to keep going with that until we get round to the other side. And I'm happy with the, uh, the, the shape that I've got. Now, the other thing that you could do is, once you've come around that side, let's have a little look, what else have I got? Bear with me a minute. I'll just go off track a minute. I need to get another little bead in. I might put that one in there. Um, yeah, so once you've got round the other side, if you find when you look at your design, you feel that you kind of feel like there's a gap somewhere and you wish you'd have put a bigger bead at that point or you feel like it needs filling then you could just go back over it again so you could come all the way around here and then you could go back over and add more beads on so I do want to show you that so I'm going to quickly get on a few beads let's go with a big um pearl I love pearls with these colours. This is quite a kind of a, a sea theme, really, that we've got going on here. With the pearls and the aqua colour and the green. Okay. And that is it. So let's put that one on. All right, there we go. All right. Morning, everybody else is joining. Okay, so I'm just going to keep... Adding those. Look, that's really starting to come up now. Isn't that looking nice? Right, let's get a few more on and then I'm going to show you how to finish it. Let's get a sparkly one on. Oh, so like that. I think I'll get a couple more of the little. Shrovskis on there. Let's do another. I want one of those darker ones, which is good. I should have sorted out my pattern before you guys joined me, shouldn't I? <laughs> Let's get one of those on. One of these little goldy coloured ones. So I sell a whole selection of um of the Swarovskis in the shop. Not loads and loads, but like all the really nice colours that people seem to like. Um, and then in four mil bicones, and they work nicely because they sit quite nicely together because of the shape. So a bicone is that shape, be two cones, hence bicone. Okay, let's get one more of these on. And then I think that's kind of even it, evened up a bit. Maybe one more, maybe one more, I think. I think I need one more on that side. Oh, yeah, I think I could squeeze another in there. So let's see if we can get that little blue on because then it kind of pulls the blue through from that side because I've got a blue one down the bottom there, you see. And if I tuck that one in there, there we go. Okay, so am I happy with the balance of that? I, I, can, I, I kind of am, really, right? quite sweet isn't it but if I did want to go back all I would do is turn this around and start working backwards so I'm coming around the wire I could go under around there you see how it's coming around so it's going I'm making a line of wire underneath that first bead and then I can bring it up here now I could then add a bead at that point so let me do that to show you add a bead on and it come all the way down Again, hold it into position. So I'm going to pinch it. So there it is. And I'm going to pinch it there so it can't move. What I don't want is it moving onto the top or the back. So I'm going to hold it there. And then I'm going to come around and wrap it again. So I'm going to pull that around the base. 
and then I can come up there. Look at that. See how it's starting to pull the design out into the piece? So you could really build it up quite a bit. Let's put a slightly bigger bead in so you'll be able to see. I want a nice aqua colour. What have we got here? Let's have a little look. So we've got one of these would be quite nice. I think that would slot in there. Okay. So actually let's go with a the pearl there. All right, so watch what's going to happen. So see that gap? I'm I want that pearl to sit up in that gap. So I'm going to push it up into place. Look at that. And then I'll pull my wire around. So I'm going to hold it in position and pull that around the base. Now, what you don't want is you don't want your wire sitting all over your beads. So I'm going to pull that and wiggle it down in between the beads so I get back to the base. And look. All right, so I could really build that up a little bit and build that up however I'd like to amongst that, in, within that design. So it's all gonna sit in the middle. So I'm not gonna cut this end off because I wanna finish it and then I'll take a photo and post it for you. But what you would do to finish it is you would cut it and you'd leave yourself a little section. So probably about five mil of wire there. And then you can take your pliers, you can pull it around the frame like this and you can squeeze the ends down. So you end up with a nice neatly tucked in end. Now the other thing you could do, you could play around with wiring all the way up to create some more detail. You could play around with adding different colored wires if you wanted to when you were adding these on. But that's the idea, that you build it all up and you add all your beads into a section and onto a frame. Um, and the same that I've done here, all I've done with this piece here is I've taken two pieces that I've curled each end over and then I've just bound them in two sections. And this one, you'll notice, has got a little bead hanging off of the bottom. So what you could do with this if you wanted to is you could make it so you've got a little bead hanging from the bottom, which would be quite nice on a pendant idea, wouldn't it? Because it would just kind of hang underneath. So there we go. All right. Now, just before you go, I'm going to also just show you quickly how to make a little heart shape, which is quite sweet in this. So that one that we've just used there, we used a former, we formed it around the former and then we curled the ends in. If you were doing something that was more of a, a heart shape, what you could do is, again, cut yourself your 12 centimetres or 120 millimetres, cut with your... Uh, side cutters and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bend in it slightly off center all right so I've got a longer piece this side compared to this side and I'm going to make a little bend there like that so you can see that this one's quite a bit longer then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round nose pliers I'm going to grip the end of that wire and then I'm going to twist it I'm going to hold it and I'm kind of pulling it you see how I'm pulling it and I'm getting a really lovely shape there. And then I'm going to grip this side and I'm going to start to pull that around to get a nice shape on that side. Look, and then I can bind it together and that's like a nice little heart shape. So they look quite nice kind of off to the side. Again, these are nice in the window as well, all right? So again, what I would do is I would bind it at that point and then I can start decorating. Whether you do that on the inside or the outside, hang little bits off the bottom, endless what you can do. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's kind of adding in a few new tools really with the hammers and the little steel plate and things as well, um, but really following on from the wire work that we did. So um, I will look forward to seeing you later on in the week. I've got lots of plans for other things that we're doing. Just to let you all know as well, the Art Weeks has started in Oxford. They're doing it as a virtual festival, so it's really worth a look. I'm going to be posting some details up on my um, Facebook page. I've got a gallery on there and I'm going Going to be doing a virtual exhibition from home so hopefully if there's any presents that you need jewelry wise you might see something that you like and I can uh, post that out to you um, so have a lovely day everybody and I will see you on Thursday take care
Bye. Thank you. Bye.